Landscape Architecture Program information session. My name is Clinton Hines and I'm the convener of the Landscape Architecture Program here at UCT. Uh, I've been here about uh, 13 years now, I think, and before that in Pretoria. And then also with me here is Christine, who's uh, the other permanent full-time staff member here at UCT. And we've got um, uh, some recent graduates who are joining us too. You're gonna hear from them in a, in, in a bit. Uh, so, uh, and of course we have a whole string of part-time lecturers who are working professionals, but they're not joining us now because they, they're busy doing work in the office. So thank you very much for joining us. The idea is that we share as much information in a short, compact form as we can. It's quite quick and to the point uh, to give people an idea about studying landscape architecture because we get quite a few inquiries. And in um, pulling all of that together and experience from the last couple of years, we realize a lot of people are not quite sure what landscape architecture is about. So um, we really want to try and share what studying landscape architecture is about and what working uh, as a landscape architect, briefly what that's about as well. So let me jump straight in and um, get things going. Okay, so the session is particularly for those interested in possibly applying for uh, next year. So we'll help you as well with any queries you might have about that and give you as much information as we can. So just quickly as we start, please won't you do us a huge favor and put your name in the chat and what you're currently studying, where you're coming from, what's your degree, so that it helps us to always know how um, to focus these presentations and, and Christine will keep an eye on that and just let us know how it goes um, and we will record. So please uh, use the chat if you don't want to be recorded because we're gonna probably put a link to this on our website. So if you don't want to, yourself to appear on the website uh, asking a question, then please pop it in the chat. But please do in any case, pop your questions in the chat because Christine again will keep an eye on that. And it's quicker for her to just quickly run through those questions at the end Hopefully we get time. So please pop your, your questions in the chat. If we don't get a chance, we will add those to our, um, our FAQs, frequently asked questions. We'll add them in our information on the website. So your question will be answered, may, may not be today, but we will answer it as well. And remember to keep your mics muted. Okay, so we're doing essentially these four sections. We're going to start with the admission requirements and what it's like studying landscape architecture. We're going to chat a little bit about the degree in relation to the other degrees in the school here. And when you exit from that uh, degree, where do you go from there, from either of the degrees? So we're looking at how you get in and then what happens when you get out. Uh, and then uh, we're going to have uh, some information about students, recent graduates and what they're doing. Uh, then we're going to hear from three people, Kwesi, Apalele and Hilton, who have all studied landscape architecture recently. They're going to tell you in uh, three to five minutes their story. And um, then we'll have a little bit more detail about the application process and take some questions. So just a quick view into what is it like studying landscape architecture in our buildings. So yeah, you can see some images. It's a design program, it's design based. So it's visual spatial design. So you put up uh, drawings of your designs that you conceptualize around landscape and you present those designs. That's the major thing you do. Uh, it's called studio. It's uh, similar to architecture in that sense. Um, and then we have supporting courses. You'll see some of them a little bit later. So here on the left-hand side is one of our final years presenting Nicola. And she's presenting her scheme she designed 
uh, up in uh, Malawi, if I remember correctly, it was a scheme there. And we've got examiners there. We've got Tana, who's one of our most experienced practitioners in Cape Town on the left, sitting on the chair. Then we've got an examiner from CPUT. Please remember to mute your, your, your microphones. Um, we have in the middle there with the blue shirt is actually a very experienced lecturer from uh, the Harvard University. We were lucky to have critting with us this year. Gareth Doherty is his name. Harvard is supposedly the best landscape architecture school in the world. So we were happy to have him visit us. He's apparently coming again. We're not quite sure when. And then on the right is Finzi Saidi from University of Joburg. Uh, and on, on the right hand side at the top is Keke, who also published an article about her project about decolonization. And then Jan, bottom right, who's now working in the wine farm sustainability sort of field working for architects. So anyway, but this is in the studio. This is presenting projects. This is um, in the production phase of, of projects. So uh, typical uh, draft drawings that are being discussed and um, uh, put together and presented collaborative discussions with each other in the studio. So this is the life, studio life in landscape architecture. Again, if you're coming from, from architecture, it's a similar context, except it's a smaller group, which I think is very nice. So there's a little bit better interaction with each other, I think, and with the lecturers, because you're in a smaller group. Um, uh, but this is what the studio life is like. So that's where, what you spend most of your time doing, producing drawings, exploring, design in landscape. We very happy to have quite a number of field trips as part of our two degrees. Um, so we go to various places to learn various things, both projects, we go to sites where ecology is interesting to see. Um, and one of the things we uh, are very happy about and excited always about is we have specialists uh, who engages that. So freshwater ecologist, when you go to a site and you look at ecology, you're talking to a freshwater ecologist or a soil scientist or a geologist, um, uh, engineers as well. This uh, top right image on the bottom left, the chap with the glasses is, is in fact the campus landscape architect. He's showing us some of the projects that have been done on campus. So Yes, studying landscape architecture, we do because it's a small group. It's easier for us to go to sites, to go on field trips. And uh, that's something that we, we take very um, seriously because it adds a lot to your experience. And this is our collaborative work in the studio. We work, if you want to know the kind of involvement and with who do we collaborate, we collaborate with planners in the school as well as with the urban designers. So these are some images where we're working together with urban design and planning students. So we do some collaborative studios and the majority is individual, but that helps you understand the world of landscape architecture. It's a world which overlaps a lot with planning and with urban design. So we collaborate with those two groups as well. Um, and this is our bridging course. You'll hear about that now if you're coming from an unrelated, uh, from a non-design but related degree. So if you don't have a design background, we do accommodate you by having a bridging course. And these are some of the images. Top left is a very creative uh, architect from Cape Town, Albert van Jarsveld, who helps with the uh, fundamentals of design that we teach you in the bridging course. And again, you can see the work all coming together in the studio there. So that's, that's, that's the experience of studying landscape, late landscape architecture. So straight into the, um, the degrees. So we located in the School of Architecture Planning and Geomatics and on, we are postgraduate program uh, the same structure as architecture and planning here in the school. So one year honors. And here on the left are our degrees, the tan color ones. Blocks are Bachelor of Landscape Architecture honors or one year honors, 
followed by a one year master's degree. And important to note, you can go out after this honors. You can, can uh, take a couple of years out if you want to, or you can just carry on straight through. And we located in the school um, with the urban design program, city and regional planning program, the architecture program, and we have conservation and heritage here as well. Nevertheless, for those of you not sure where we sit, we sit in exactly the same structure as architecture and planning and urban design, although urban design only has a master's. Um, and of course, the only undergrad degree here is the Bachelor of Architectural Studies. So just focusing first, I'm going to go through just a few slides of how you get into the landscape architecture degree. So into the honors degree. So if you have a BAS degree from this university or any equivalent uh, Bachelor of Architectural Studies, you can come straight into the honors in landscape architecture. You don't need to take a year out like you do in architecture. You can come straight in if you want to get your studies over and get on with the rest of your life, you can come straight in, do your landscape architecture, honors and masters if you went on to masters. Uh, so you don't need to take a year out. Uh, other students who come from a bachelor of landscape architecture, uh, like they have at CPUT at the moment, they have an advanced diploma in landscape architecture or any other undergrad in landscape architecture, you also can come straight into the Bachelor of Landscape Architecture. Um, so those are the students who can come straight into this. So in other words, with a design base, can come straight into the honors, you can apply. Um, then if you have a related degree, so one of the exciting things about landscape architecture is it is kind of a uh, broad field. So it holds information and um knowledge from other disciplines as well so we we cross a little into environmental science into geography into art into ecology sociology so if you have a degree in those fields which are related most often it's environmental and science uh, and art students environmental science and art students we get so if you have a degree like that which is related to what landscape architecture is about but it's not design based you do the bridging course and the bridging course is um, a set of courses nested into one course we've got a new structure from next year so if you are doing bridging then you do exactly the same courses in the same year as the other students in the honors the only difference is you have an additional 16 credit course which carries these three courses here potentially a fourth one but it carries a set of modules in that bridging course, which are done during the, the year that you are would be coming into your honors, and that's called a bridging stream. These courses are that make up that 16 increase modules that make up the 16 credit course. Some are done in the beginning of the year, and some are done in before classes start, and some are done in the July vacation. So it's additional design uh, and drawing. Uh, and computer-based tuition. And it happens embedded in the program, but it happens in January and it happens in July. Uh, that's the current and new, new format of the bridging program. So yeah, you can see the two, half of those bridging modules, two of them up front, two of them in July is the scenario for how it will work uh, for next year. And so, on the left hand side here, you see the set of courses for the honors if you come straight in from architecture or from undergrad in landscape. You do this left hand set of courses. And then on the right hand side is the bridging stream if you're coming in from art, environmental science, or ecology, sociology, geography, something like that. You do exactly the same set of courses except the red one at the top here is added, which is a bridging course. So you register for that stream, and then you graduate at the end with the same degree, except you've done an extra 16 credit course. So that's how the bridging stream uh, works. 
And then the last category is unrelated. So we don't take students in uh, from an unrelated. So an under, undergraduate degree in maths or medicine or something like that, which is unrelated. But however, if you really wanted to do landscape architecture, there's a few things you can do, like you could do the Bachelor of City Planning, and then you could come into the honors. So you can do that honors here, or um, uh, you could try to see if you can find a way through a CPUT, maybe to get an advanced diploma if, if uh, they will let you in. But nevertheless, there are ways you can do, but that's the most unlikely route is for people with unrelated degrees. It's a bit more difficult to get in. <clears throat> okay, so that's, that's the, the way you get into the honors in landscape architecture. Um, just this slide, what I wanted to illustrate to you here is maybe just to slow it down. Yeah, now start to talk about, so what do you begin to do with this degree? What, what, what does it allow me to do? And one of the things I'm emphasizing now when I talk about this is the various paths that begin to open up. So in other words, uh, if you've got a, if you go from a Bachelor of Architecture into a honors in architecture, masters in architecture, then you go into architecture. But if you follow this route and you come into landscape architecture, it opens up some possibilities. So in other words, the Bachelor of Landscape Architecture, this one in the circle, is of course the required degree for on the left, the masters of landscape architecture, or it's the preferred route to get into the urban design program which a lot of students are beginning to explore that route. And then and we've got students currently who are in that stream. So in other words, they did the Bachelor of Landscape Architecture. They then decided they'd rather go on to do a Master of Urban Design, which is one route you can take. Other students stay in Landscape Architecture and they do Landscape Architecture. So immediately it opens up some possibilities. You can also go over into the MPhil in Conservation of the Built Environment. And that's another master's degree here. So the Bachelor of Landscape Architecture starts to open up some choice. You also don't need to decide when you enter the Bachelor of Landscape Architecture where you're going after. You can decide, take the whole year to decide what you're doing. The one thing that is very interesting to note, if you're an, a Bachelor of Architecture, uh, a BAS student, and you uh, if you, for instance, did the Bachelor of Landscape Architecture, but then you went on to urban design and you came in straight after your BAS studies, the interesting thing is, and it's just to show people possibilities that this opens up from a career point of view. If you did that, you did your three-year bachelor's, you could register with SACAP as an architectural, a candidate architectural technologist, which you can go and work with. Uh, you can find work with that degree. Then as a Bachelor of Landscape Architecture, just with that degree, you can also go and work as a landscape architectural technologist. So there's a second option there. Then if you added the Master of Urban Design onto that, you can have a third career path because you can obviously then go and find work as an urban designer and eventually register with UDISA. So in two years after your Bachelor of Architectural Studies, you can actually have three career options which start to open up. So that's just a message we're trying to get people to realize is that, that there's different opportunities that studying landscape architecture opens up. It doesn't mean you stay as a landscape architect. Of course, that's your, that you can do, but that opens up possibilities, um, especially on top of the BAS degree. Um, this is my last uh, slide before we just start talking about where landscape architects work. Um, and remember, please pop your questions in the chat. We will come to, come to them. Um, just very quickly, this information you can get on the website. Um, but just to show you that the left-hand side is this is how the two degrees work. The left-hand side, the green side is the is the honors in landscape architecture. 
uh, with a set of courses in first semester, second semester, and then the blue is the masters in landscape architecture the following year. They are completely split in the middle. So in other words, you can take time out if you wanted to after your honors and only come back later to do the masters or you go and do something else after the honors. So there's two separate degrees, but you can be done in two years and then go and work as a professional if you wanted to. And just to, for those of you who are not familiar, design on the left-hand side, these are the bodies of knowledge, the things you will study. So I don't have time to talk about each course, but design is the focus, designing the landscape, public space, open space systems. Um, we'll see some examples now. We spend quite a lot of time on ecology because it's really critical to understand our world with an ecological lens too, it's absolutely critical. Construction is important because you need to build the landscapes you design. So there is construction in the course. History and theory, of course, about all the ways people have thought about landscape architecture and design over the years. And of course, plants is an important aspect as well as part of the degree. So those are just the kinds of things that you will learn about. So just as we um, bridge over to uh, talk about, let's the three uh, recent graduates chat to us a little bit about their experiences. Um, this is a slide which just has a couple of students, a few that we've just put on here who uh, are working now as landscape architects in all various places and it just shows examples of the top left. Some people work at uh, government departments like Public Works, um, Atten Corsi, um, at the top left there is in uh, Public Works. Um, and then there's architects, landscape architects that are working at private practice as well. So on the left hand side, TKLA is Tana Klitzner Landscape Architects, Square One Landscape Architects. This is where landscape architects work, private practice, uh, uh, Evo and Amber on the middle top are working in uh, the Netherlands uh, as well. They're working in a very well-known international firm there. Top right is a new young firm, very exciting firm in, in Cape Town. Amy and Ruben are graduates from this program who started their own company in landscape architecture. Um, yeah, so those are just some examples. And what I've done on the next slide, because some people have wanted a little bit more information about that. So where do landscape architects, where do they work? What will you do with this degree? What can you do? And it's good to go and find out. That's what I put this here. So you can go and click on these firms' websites and you can look at the types of projects they work on. So these are all firms and places where our graduates are working. Just I've added one or two there where our graduates might not currently be, but have good information on landscape architecture. But I added the links because a lot of people are not aware of what landscape architects actually do. So it's very important to click on these links afterwards. You'll get the recording if you want to. And you can actually go and see where these graduates are located currently. So Square One Landscape Architects quickly is a Cape Town firm started by a landscape architect who studied in this degree, horticulture, and then this degree, masters, and has started his own firm, which has grown to be now an international firm. Only landscape architects working there and uh, about 80% of them are graduates from the schools. They've started their own firm and it's an international firm. The, the, the chap who started at Marx and Paul is now actually in Australia, running the Australia office for their firm. Yes, and studio is experimental landscape architecture. Graduates from Cape Town started their own firm. The next three are, are older established firms in South Africa, which have landscape architects from this program coming in and out of them but those give you a good view into what landscape architects do and where our graduates work. A number work in government departments and also in municipalities. The city of Cape Town has about seven or eight permanently employed full-time landscape architects. 
most of them, I might actually say almost all of them are graduates from this program. So they're working in government departments. And overseas, we've got a good number of graduates who are currently working overseas. And I really encourage you to go and look at these websites because this middle one here is important, ACOM in Australia. There's a graduate, Winston White, who's working there. And it's a massive infrastructure design firm, which is a great interdisciplinary world between civil, civil uh, architecture, landscape architecture, urban design, and working on huge infrastructure projects and interesting infrastructure projects like um, passes over highways for ecological connectivity. So bridges where uh, ecological connectivity can be established over highways. So that's, if you're interested in that kind of work, there are people that graduate from this program who end in places doing that. And SSH is a massive co company in the Middle East which is employing uh, quite a number of our graduates at the moment. And one of our part-time lecturers who's working for them at the moment says they're busy with the new city in the Middle East and they're planning and, and him and a couple of other people are sitting here in Cape Town working for them in the Middle East. And they're designing planning a city for 6 million inhabitants and they, they, they're planning and designing the landscape component of this. So if you wonder where you work, this gives you a sense of where you work. The last one is people who've gone to study further with this degree. Mapula studied a master's in France, an additional master's on top of her current master's. Alex with this degree went on and did an additional master's in sustainable urbanism from places like the Bartlett School of, of uh, Planning which is in uh, London. So anyway, there's lots of possibilities you can go on to in terms of study and work. So let me stop there. Thanks, Christine. Um, we're going to share a um, quick video, a three minute video from Kwesi, who's currently working in um, Ireland. So let's hear what he has to say. And then maybe what I'll do is stop just after that for a quick few questions after the three uh, recent graduates have spoken. So over to you, Christine. Let's hear from Kwesi. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Kwesi. I currently live in Dublin. Um, I hope you're all doing well. And I'm really sorry that I couldn't uh, attend the info session today. I'm hoping that this video uh, gives adequate information and uh, if not, you can always contact me. I will leave my email address with uh, Christine and Clinton. So I'm just going to briefly share my journey from the University of Cape Town to working as a landscape architect in Dublin. Um, I completed my bachelor's degree in EGS and oceanography. And then after that, I pursued an honours and master's in landscape architecture um, in the School of Architecture uh, at UCT. My background in EGS really provided me with a broad understanding of natural processes, ecosystems and sustainability issues, which were very fundamental to landscape architecture. Um, through EGS, I was able to develop skills in data analysis, critical thinking and problem solving, all of which I still use today in designing and planning landscapes. So after graduating from UCT in 2021, I made the move to Dublin, uh, where I currently work as a landscape architect in a medium-ish sized firm. However, making the move abroad wasn't as easy as I thought it would be. So it's why I would like to give some advice to anyone who's considering pursuing a career abroad or in Dublin. Firstly, uh, please do spend some time researching as much as possible. Uh, if you're interested in landscape architecture or environmental sustainability, make yourself known by sending emails and by networking with people. I found these two methods to be the best way of getting your name out there. So using platforms like LinkedIn is a very good way of networking and getting to know people within landscape architecture or environmental sciences and sustainability. Secondly, work on your portfolio as soon as possible. 
I think as soon as you get into landscape architecture, the best thing to do is to create a new document where you can sort of dump your work on. It's so that at the end of your degree, you have a portfolio to finish and not a portfolio to start from scratch. Uh, thirdly, um, make sure to pay attention to international salaries. This is important to ensure that you agree to contracts that are fair towards you. Lastly, if you have a specific country in mind, please make sure to look at visa and documentation requirements as early as possible. Uh, this is because processing visas takes a long time and it's best to be prepared and early. So if you have any interest in working abroad or working in Dublin, please do not hesitate to email me. I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have to the best of my ability. And um, yep, yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much it. So thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this and thank you to Clinton and Christine for organizing and yeah, good luck with the future and good luck with landscape architecture. Bye. That's great. That's uh, uh, Kwesi from Dublin. He's came through the bridging program from environmental science. And anyway, testimony to the fact that you can work overseas and find opportunities there as well with your degree. Apalele, let's go straight over to Apalele, who I, if I remember correctly is in Pretoria. Over to you, Apalele. Thank you, Clinton. Um, can I share my screen? Oh yeah, I think I have access. Um... Yeah, it should be fine. Yeah, there we go. It's coming through. Okay, awesome. Okay, over to you. Um, thank you very much, Quentin, um, for this opportunity. Um, good day, everyone. Um, I am very honored to be in invited in this, um, in this opening session as an alumnus of um, the program. So I'm just gonna give I'm just gonna give the attendees a quick background about my education. Um, I'm currently actually not in Pretoria. I'm outside of South Africa as well. I'm studying Masters of Urban Administration and Planning in the University of Seoul uh, in South Korea. Uh, my research interests are in urban security and crime prevention through information and communication technologies, which is ICT and the Internet of Things with this IoT. And um, I'm planning to look um, into Pretoria CBD as my study area. Um, as I said, I'm an alumni from uh, this program, the University of Cape Town. I graduated in 2018, and my research areas were in focusing on deprogramming de uh, colonial and apartheid planning, uh, appropriating infrastructure, and learning from informality from uh, um, townships around Cape Town. So also just a side note, um, I was also part of the extended curriculum, which is the bridging course introduction to spatial design before um, uh, starting the, the main course at, at, at UCT. I'm also a graduate uh, from the uh, Cape Peninsula University of Technology, Clinton mentioned earlier. Um, I graduated with diploma and bachelor's, the Bachelor of Technology and Landscape Technology. So just straight to uh, my professional experience, um, I am currently um, inaugurated as a councillor or director, if you may, um, or as a state representative at the South African Council for the Landscape Architectural Profession, which is SAC Club. Um, I am also involved in Landscape Architectural Registration Committee, Education Committee, and um, yeah, uh, and I'm a registered professional within the council. Um, I um, I work as an in-house professional landscape architect uh, for the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure, um, which is a national government based in Pretoria, uh, under the property management trading entity, which is PMTE, uh, Real Estate and Investment Services, REAS, Architectural Services. Um, I also, during COVID, I, 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 um, I worked as a visiting lecturer um, uh, from, uh, at the Cape Peninsula University of Technology, um, just helping out in construction drawing uh, under the department from which I graduated from. Uh, while I was in Cape Town studying uh, at, actually at 
UCT, I also worked as an intern and a candidate, candidate landscape architect for one of the well-known landscape architects in Cape Town uh, called uh, Terra Plus Landscape Architects, a wonderful small studio um, located in Woodstock. Um, prior to that, um, as a student at CPUT, uh, CPUT um, has got a program where you actually work for, um, for six months or uh, a year in practice, it's called in service training. And while conducting that, I worked at Room to Grow Exterior Designers and Construction uh, based in Cape Town, which is more of a, a construction firm. Um, yeah, I think um, the other thing that I think I want to bring up as to, I'm, I'm sure most of you are here wondering um, why um, would it be a good thing to move towards uh, studying landscape architecture? I thought of bringing this up because as, as I mentioned, I'm working for SACLAP, so I'm very much involved into um, the registration prop, uh, uh, process and knowing who's registered at what time. So I just wanted to bring up this, um, this statistics just to show you guys how many landscape architects are registered in South Africa and under which category. Uh, Clinton has mentioned, um, if you want to exit the program at the bachelor's degree, uh, at a bachelor's program, you can register as a senior landscape architectural technologist. If you exit the level, if you exit the program at um, uh, a master's program, you can register as a professional landscape architect. So this is the stats um, as it as it sits uh, in South Africa at the moment, and you can see the numbers are low. If I had the stats to show, for instance, the number of like registered uh, engineers, number of registered architects in South Africa, you would see that the gap is too big. And um, just to show you other categories in terms of like uh, um, candidate uh, landscape architects that are registered uh, can, uh, up to candidate landscape technicians. So there's various uh, levels at which professionals and even candidates register with the, um, with the council. But you can see generally the numbers are low. And um, as we know that um, urbanization, uh, there are issues in, in Africa and in the developing world, uh, such as urbanization, climate change, and we, everyone is moving towards smart and sustainable cities. We actually need landscape architects, professions, professionals, and skills for this. And with these numbers, I think it would be a good move for you guys to start considering moving towards um, um, professions such as landscape architects. Like for instance, if you look at climate change, um, South African government uh, on the 2030 um, uh, development plan, um, they have focused mainly on mitigations for climate change, such as adaptation, which is to help ad uh, communities that are more vulnerable to climate change to adapt. And more, most of these um, initiatives will include um, uh, place-based, which is to focus on how do we actually improve infrastructure. And some of them will also focus on people-based people um, approaches. And as a landscape architect, as a landscape architect, this is a field of specialty that you will get to to learn from, from, this point, from this point. And as I said, urbanization, um, um, as scholars have, uh, have argued that uh, in 2050, the population in urban areas will be double what it is now. So just imagine uh, that grand scale of population and most of, this, uh, most of this movement is going to happen in the developing countries. And, so, and you know, South Africa and Africa in general is a developing country. And with this stress in urban areas, um, uh, public open spaces, uh, natural systems, and um, uh, environmental rehabilitation is going to be in the center of development. And as a landscape architect, as a landscape architect, it means you are going to be in the forefront of the development. And um, I mentioned uh, smart and sustainable cities. As you know, that my, my as I mentioned, that my research is focusing on how do we, um, you know, in the developing, in the developing world, uh, high crime rates in urban areas and in public spaces has become a thing. Uh, uh, that's my uh, area of research. And I'm looking at how do we enhance and um, uh, uh, how do we um, uh, leverage the, um, uh, the, the, abundance, the abundance of ICT and IOTs and how do we use that and uh, sort of like uh, retrofit it in public open spaces to combat and prevent uh, and prevent crime. And this is one of the concepts that you guys will learn about uh, in this program. Um, um, Kenty mentioned that one of the visiting lectures or the studios that you might work in, in, in Tanak, Tanak Landscape Architects, 
And she's one of the landscape architects in Cape Town who also very, is very passionate about this concept. And you might uh, visit uh, some of the sites that have already been constructed in Kailicha using concepts such as um, uh, time prevention through urban upgrade. So um, yeah, I think you guys should consider um, should consider this as a, one of the driving force for you guys to start the landscape architecture. And I think it's very important uh, to think about these things before you 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 consider choosing a profession or like uh, advancing on the profession, so that when you're studying, you can sort of like channel your research interests towards uh, what you ultimately think uh, the the industry is driving forward. So the other things just to mention as to, um, I think some of the things that I think you should know before uh, joining, uh, I think Tintin has already mentioned that landscape architects draw. So we present constructible ideas as drawings. So um, if you are joining this program, you should, you should know that you will have to draw either by hand or digitally. The second thing is the landscape architecture program, as Quentin mentioned, uh, admits uh, graduates from almost um, um, from almost every or various academic backgrounds. So it's sort of like trans or multidisciplinary um, uh, profession, which is a great thing. Now you will be you will be stepping away from your comfort zone. You have to deal and work with other students from different backgrounds with different notions and concepts. And then um, the third one is uh, landscape architecture students spend a lot of their time uh, in the labs and studio. I think this is also very important uh, to know so that um, you, you commit knowing that you'll be spending a lot of your time engaging with your projects and your coursework. Landscape architecture is about everything under the open sky. So um, a lot of people would argue that landscape arch architects should know a little bit about everything. Uh, so another one is the fifth one, I think it's also very important, as I mentioned, that you'll be spending a lot of time in the lab and the studio, so you've got to be passionate. So the more the most passionate students or candidates will enjoy studying landscape architecture. Um, yeah, so I think these five um, are not very technical, but I think are some of the things that I think uh, you should know before joining the course. Um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, if you guys have more questions about uh, what I do or um, my experience uh, at, at UCT, um, what I do at Public Works or what I'm what I'm studying in South Korea, feel free to contact me. I will leave my details with Quentin and uh, Christine. Thank you. Thank you so much, Afalele. Uh, so many important points you raised. And uh, yeah, it's amazing. You're moving faster than I can keep up. So <laughs> well done. Uh, Hilton, let's go straight over to you. So Hilton is uh, representing those who are thinking of coming into landscape architecture from BAS. Over to you, Hilton. How's it, guys? Um, so I'll do my best to follow on Apalele's uh, chat there. <laughs> he covered a lot of things, um, very important things. Um, but yeah, as Clinton said, I um, I did the BAS undergrad, um, the Archie undergrad, and then moved straight into my honors in landscape architecture, architecture um, and then followed with my master's. Um, I, yeah, what, what I want to do, change to landscape architecture i think because i just just for my love of the outdoors and working on a much um larger scale and th my interest in outdoor spaces and trees and plants um and i wasn't definitely wasn't disappointed um with the degree um i think it was extremely interesting learning about um learning about the environment and all the different um factors that um, play a role in it um both urban and more natural environments um so i really really enjoyed um learning about those types of things so i, I definitely um, would highly recommend it if you um yeah if you come from an, a more architectural design background um, and are interested in, in in more natural more natural world and and the larger workings of um of the environment as a whole um, I definitely recommend the course. Um, so yeah, the course, the shift from, from architecture to landscape, um, I found it um, both challenging and um, helpful. Um, so challenging in ways that obviously um, didn't have much background on, on plants or um, of ecosystems or of anything on that kind of scale, but um, I found it very engaging and very very um, easy to learn um, but then on the design background um, obviously that was very much helped for, from the BAS undergrad um, and techno technologically as well and um, being able to understand how things are put together and having a background in um, 
um, in construction drawing um, and stuff like that really, really did help. Um, so yeah, I think there's both positives um, and and challenges. Um, but yeah, I I thoroughly enjoyed my um, my time studying um, landscape architecture, especially um, my masters. I looked um, I looked into yeah how community development and how um, we could use um, ecological design um, and sustainable design to um, basically use salt and sustainable systems um, to upgrade a, a community and, and essentially save save an area from um, possible uh, mining destruction and, and future search destruction as um as we develop um as as a human race uh currently um i'm working at a at a practice um called true form landscape architects we are part of a larger architectural practice um out in Balbo, and it's been a super um quick shift from setting i finished my masters last year um and applied straight after my yeah straight after i finished my degree or actually during um so yeah it's been a it's been a quick turnover um it's been a very very steep learning curve um i think you you do learn a lot um from the degree but there's always um gaps and things and i think um that's where yeah like the the extra learning at at gct really helps to to fill in those gaps um so it's been exciting on the technological front um i think at gct i I focused a lot on um, on hand drawing, whereas now moving into a, a working practice, um, it's highly focused on Revit um, and kind of these um, BIM related programs, which is I think very exciting for the for the discipline because um, it's allowing us to move forward. We um, we work in VR, we work and uh, we do a lot of three D rendering. Um, so it's an extremely exciting space to be in um, with regards to the landscape architectural discipline um because i think um there are quite a few just uh quite a few practices who are still stuck on cad um and kind of 2d design software um so it's an exciting new space to be in um and yeah it's great to be able to um be interdisciplinary with um the architects and planners um who work work in the practice as well um so I'd certainly, if you into that kind of um, thinking um, with regards to uh, you know, progressing into new programs, becoming more fluent um, within um, the built environment um, with regards to software, um, it's it's a, it's a good space to to kind of push um, because there are in South Africa, especially, I think there are a few people who are doing it. Um, so yeah. That's that's it for me. Thanks very much, Hilton and uh, Apalele and Kwezi. Really appreciate your um, insights into the experience of studying landscape work and where you're going now. So thanks very much, guys. I think Hilton, I'm sure would be willing to answer some questions too. Can we spread your email address over the web? Yeah, sure. Um, thank you. I'm aware of the time because I want us to try and finish up by one. So I'm going to quickly just uh, uh, finish off my slides and then we can open up for some questions if there are. So let me just quickly share my last few slides. So people uh, ask often, what kinds of projects do you do when you're studying and what can I do as my thesis project? What can I do as my thesis project? What are people doing in landscape architecture as their main project? Three quick examples that represent a kind of categories that are happening. So the first one is, this is an example of a competition somebody entered on Sunil Stay in a while ago in uh, her master's year, was a competition for a river in Nairobi, and it was in a developing context. So this is a typical scale that we work on a framework level scale. And it's a typical of a big group of projects which are focused around very developing contexts, a big problems in terms of water quality in the natural systems. And how can we apply our minds in terms of placemaking right up to the river's edge, ecological systems to try to assist with uh, trying to improve water quality infrastructural systems around these conditions 
so this just represents a big body of work we're doing. We're doing a lot of work in Google Lair 2 now as well at, this, at Studio 5 at the moment. So how do we, how do we apply our, our minds into uh, dealing with these developing contexts? So that's one group of projects which is um, <clears throat> a lot of people are working on at the moment. This is another one, and it's similar to Hilton's project he was talking about. A student from art actually worked on uh, in uh, Saldana Bay, and it's really a socio-ecological system. So I'm helping you to understand the type of scale we work on and the kinds of projects. These, this one is very much to do with the whole economic, social, and ecological system around the bay and the harbor. And particularly, interestingly enough, with ballast water from the ships. You can read what is ballast water from ships, but it's causing problems when they bring that water into the harbor and how that affects people's economic livelihoods because it's impl impacting the ecology. So that's a major drive at the moment to understand the system. Hilton talked about salt marshes and the economic, his project was about that and the economic opportunities. So. And this is a scale, I think, that matters where we can make a difference, really make a difference, is in terms of these socio-ecological systems around a community connected to a bay. Uh, and so anyway, that's another body of projects that are doing. And the last one I want to show is uh, a student, Evo, who did a project on the essentially uh, ecological systems in the mountain area around Paul. Uh, and it was all to do with invasive species and what invasive species are doing, the economic opportunities together with the ecological problems with invasive species, yet economic opportunities too. How do you marry those? And produced an incredibly creative project around ecological issues. And that's another body of very exciting work where we're merging creative spatial thinking with ecological systems, which no other discipline is doing properly at the moment. Is Most people talk about ecology as science and design as something else, but um, we're trying to merge these worlds. And this was an incredibly exciting project which did that. So just to finish, uh, uh, selection criteria, you can find this on our applications information as well. But um, we essentially are interested in uh, a generally an average of about 65 coming in, but it's not a, a required minimum, it's a preferred minimum. And then a portfolio of your design work, uh, there's academic writing is important, and you also do a motivation for studying landscape architecture. That's part of your selection criteria. The minimum requirements, I think I've alluded to those, but you can see those in the application information clearly. This is our website. So at the bottom there on the right, that yellow arrow is a very comprehensive uh, document we've put together about application information and process. You can get it there on our website, as well as, um, some information you'll also see there about projects students have done. This information session we'll upload there and you can get course information, etc., on the website. Um, and applying online, you apply online. And my uh, only advice to you is apply as early as possible. Um, because, and if you're, for instance, studying BAS, you don't need to wait until you've finished your portfolio before you apply. Because everybody says, I want to include my BAS3 project, which will only be done the end of, Jan end of November. Don't wait until then. Apply, put in the work you have up until then, and get your name on the system, get yourself into the system. Um, so uh, the most important thing is to get your application in as early as possible. And you can, of course, add information to that application if it's not there. So rather get your name onto the list as soon as possible, because we make offers as soon as we get the information. So you can get an offer quite early. 
The deadlines, however, are 31 October for international applicants, 30 November for local. But again, rather get your material in and your name into the system early rather than later. And remember, by applying, you're not committing to study either. It's only when you register in, in January that you actually commit to study this. So that's what I encourage people to do. You don't need to make this big decision. Get your name into the, into the queue, and you've at least then got an option if you want to exercise it. So there's no reason to wait. Um, yeah, that's it. So I've got some questions. Maybe, Christine, we can uh, stop there. Is there anything that has come up in the chat that I should address? There were two questions. I've answered them in the chat already, but maybe it might be worth just um, going over it again. So there's a question about being able to do, so after doing the honours, um, the Bachelor of Landscape Architecture Honours, to be able to go straight into the Masters of Urban Design. And so I said in the chat, we do have a number of students who do that. They're currently, I think, three students in the Urban Design program who were doing their BLA honours last year or the previous year. And we've had some fabulous graduates, including Satla Davids, who's a, um, um, she's actually an artist. She did a BA Fine Arts at Michaelis, came to do the BLA honours. She did the MUD in Urban Design and she's exhibited through the Norval Institute. Um, so we, it's, it, is, it is a fantastic route through um, and um, we recommend it because Urban Design doesn't have an undergraduate um, program and landscape architecture is a very closely related field. Um, and we share some of the courses with Urban Design anyway. So highly recommend doing that if urban design is um, something that you're interested in. Do you know, if you want to add to that? No, just to realize that you can't go into the urban design program from the BAS straight away because it's a master's, you're missing the honors level. So that's why the landscape architecture is the honors you use to get into the urban design program. I mean, you can come through with a BAS honors or even planning honors. Um, and obviously we're biased in landscape architecture, mm -hmm. but we feel BLA honors is a really good um, route into the MUD. There was another question about bursaries. Um, so are there bursary opportunities for landscape architecture? So as Apalele showed you, the landscape architecture industry is very small at the moment, but the last, uh, which is the Institute of Landscape Architecture in South Africa, they do sponsor bursaries at all the four major educational institutions in South Africa, but they maybe only give one or two bursaries per institution per year. So highly recommend looking for bursaries um, outside of Alasa. I did put the link to the UCT Postgraduate Funding Office um, on the website. My top tip to give to you is to please start looking for bursaries now, a lot of the um, bursary applications close around the middle of the year. So you're looking at July, August, um, when we have students coming in February to ask us if there are funding opportunities, most of them have closed by then. So by then it's too late. Um, the NRF and places like that do offer um, bursaries. And if you follow the UCT postgraduate website, they post um, all the bursary application um, as they come up. So you must just keep an eye on that. Um, let's see, there are two more questions. Uh, can I be accepted before the closing date in October? So definitely, if you get an application in and we have a look at your application, um, we will make, if you're still studying, so if you, for example, I don't know, Tamela, what your undergrad is, but say, for example, you're doing the BAS, so you're currently finishing it, we can make you a conditional offer um, if we're willing to offer you a place before, before October. Um, if you've already completed your BAS, for example, um, it's entirely possible we could make you a firm offer for study um, before the end of the year. Um, Can I just and, add the, well, please do. Christine, I think that's a very important point uh, that's come out there is that uh, that's what I'm encouraging you to, to get your application in early. Don't think you need to wait until you finish your BAS uh, or whatever undergrad you might be doing because if we are happy with your application, uh, we understand you haven't finished your BAS, but we're happy with your interim results. We can make you a conditional offer, which means all you need to do is graduate at the end 
and then that offer automatically changes to a, a full offer. So you can, in the next, uh, as soon as the applications are open, you can actually get an offer in August, September already if you wanted one. Then at least you know you've actually already got a place somewhere. So that's why I'm saying um, just be proactive with it and don't wait until the end. Uh, you don't need to wait until the end. Sorry, Christine, there was another question. Yeah, there are two more questions. Um, um, Tamela is asking, I'm more of a digital designer. How much hand drawing or digital design is done in the honors programs? Are there restrictions on what design techniques you use? Um, I'll give a quick answer and maybe Kenson mm. can add to that. So some of our studios, you'll find we have um, external um, lecturers. We bring in people from private practice and we really still encourage hand drawing for design. It's um, very difficult to design and understand conceptual design information on a computer. Um, we tend to see computers as presentation. So you can, once you've worked up a design by hand, you can um, digitize it um, or do construction details or working drawings digitally. And no, we're not, we don't really restrict what um, programs you use, but you might find that there are some studios where um, hand drawing is a predominant um, mode through which we would like to see working. Um, if you would like to add to that. No, that's, I agree with that completely. There was another one. Um, do you need to have a BAS degree from UCT to enter the BLA honors program? No, not at all. Um, as Clinton mentioned at the beginning, um, it, there are a range of undergraduate um, degrees that gain entry into the BLA honors. So if you have any kind of architecture degree from um, um, UJ, WITS, Free State, we've had students come from there before, or a BTEC in architecture from CPUT or TUT, we've had students come through those paths. Um, you don't even have to have a degree in architecture, it can be a, a landscape architecture, say for the advanced diploma um, at CPUT, or the Bachelor of Landscape Architecture at the University of Pretoria. Um, and then, as Clinton mentioned, people who come from related um, but non design degrees, such as EGS or fine arts can come through the bridging stream um, and complete that course that way. So I don't know, and Tando, I don't know what your um, undergraduate degree is. If you want to post it there, we can definitely confirm um, that you can apply. And then I see Apalele has kindly posted a link to some DATT um, potential bursaries. So that that's very, thanks mm. Apalele. Um, there are no more questions in the chat, but I think if anybody wants to raise their hand and ask a question in person, you're very welcome to do that as well. Do you see we have just gone over two? So um, if you, I suppose if you need to leave, you're welcome to, but otherwise Clinton and I can hang around for a few minutes and um, see if there are any more questions. Okay. That's maybe, yeah, that, that's maybe it. So uh, thank you very much, everybody. And especially thank you to Hilton, Apalele, and Kwezi, and then also Christine. Thanks so much for the work behind the scenes to make all these things work smoothly. So we'll post this um, link to this recording on the uh, website, and we might also have another session in the second early second half of the year, we'll, we'll see how things go. Otherwise, thank you for joining us and we hope to see you again soon sometime. Thanks everybody. Bye.